Most of my two-minute tutorials focus on using PixInsight to process your image. This one is going to be a little bit different. Rather than process your image, this one will show you how you can use PixInsight to automatically annotate your image. Now, why would you want to do this? I can think of two main reasons. If you want to share your image with others, sometimes it's nice to help them understand what they are seeing. Another reason is that now that you've captured and processed an image, it might be nice to understand what you're seeing. I first started using Annotate Image when I created my website and I wanted to create a posting for each of my imaging projects. It seemed like annotating my image was a natural part of telling the story of that imaging project. In this particular case, this image happens to be a wide field shot of Sagittarius, which includes M8, the Lagoon Nebula, M20, the Triffid Nebula, M21, which is an open cluster, as well as some other interesting nebulae up in here. And I wanted to be able to tell the story of this particular image, and I wanted people to get a feeling for what was in it. So by creating this annotated version of the image, we can see the richness of what is in that particular field. I felt this helped tell my story. Having PI to annotate your image is basically a two-part process. The first part is making sure that your image has an astrometric solution. If you processed your image recently using WBPP, you may already have this solution in place. If not, you'll have to plate solve your image and write the astrometric solution to your image. Let's quickly cover how you can do that. Under the script and image analysis menu, you'll find the Image Solver script. Let's run that. Image Solver needs a few pieces of critical information in order to plate solve your image. The first is it must have some rough coordinates about where you're looking. Second is you're going to need a date, which is kind of rough as well. And then finally, you're going to need some information about your telescope. The easiest thing to deal with is knowing the focal length of your scope. And then finally, the size in micron of pixels on your imaging sensor. Now, you may have this information in the header information of your FITS file. If so, it'll be inherited. But if not, you should be able to fill these in relatively simply. For the image we were looking at before, the Lagoon Nebula, I'm going to do a search for M8. This found the Lagoon Nebula. and I can now say OK. And it has populated the information. Next, I'm going to have to say about when I took this image, and that's probably close enough. Uh, my scope is actually a 400 millimeter focal length, and my pixel size is 3.76 microns, so I'm all set. So I should be able to run this now. Okay, now we're done. At this point, this image now has an astrometric solution. Now, how do I take this image over to this image where I'm showing and annotating what the features are in the image? Well, in order to do that, I'm going to run a script called Annotate Image. So let's put this away for a moment. We're going to look under Script. This time we're looking under the Render menu, and we're going to look for Annotate Image. When the script opens, it's locked into the last image that, that was selected. And as we look at this script, there's a few key areas. The first area is the layers area. This area has a series of catalogs or informational elements that can be included in your image. And you can scroll down and see the list of them. And as you scroll down and see the list of them, you can see that some are selected and some are not. This basically gives you control of what features you'd like the annotation script to add to your particular image. And we can see that we have a grid showing the coordinates. There's constellation borders, constellation lines, name stars, Messier objects, NGC IC objects, Tycho 2 catalog, PGC catalog, and so on. Sometimes the list will be shorter than you might like to have, and you do have the option of uh, adding more elements to your list. And you can do that by hitting this plus sign. This brings up a list of all the catalogs that you can use. And you can scroll down here and decide which ones you'd like to add. For myself, the ones that I tend to bring in, if they're not there already, is the Bright Stars catalog. 
I tend to like to bring in Lin's catalog of bright nebulae and Lin's catalog of dark nebulae. The Sharpless catalog and Bernard catalog of dark objects. Um, if those are not in, I would select these, select it, hit OK, and that will add it to your list. Another one that's kind of handy to have in is this text one that allows you to put an arbitrary string of text and an arbitrary location in the image. All right, so now we have these in here. We have to decide what we're going to add. So I typically add the grid, constellation borders, constellation lines, name stars, the Messier objects, NGC objects. And I tend to add, like to add the bright stars, the LBN, LDN, Sharpless, and Bernard catalogs. Now that I have that information in, as I select them, this area in here tells me how these are going to be shown. It shows you what the marker color will be, how transparent it's going to be. It talks about the width of the markers. You can choose the font, the font size, whether it's bold or italic and color and again opacity. These are what really define how this tool will lay markers and text on your image. And these are the things you're going to want to tweak in order to get the look that you particularly like. You also have some general properties down here and you have the ability to increase the text scale globally and the graphic scale globally. In general I tend not to use those because I like to have control over that in my particular image. If I wanted to try out just to get a feel for what was happening with this configuration, I could just run the script and run it many times until I get it the way I wanted. But actually, there's a more convenient way of doing that. They have a preview button that when you push, will go ahead, do the calculations, and show you a version of the image using the current configuration. And in this, you can scroll around, you can zoom in, you can get a feel of what's going on. So in this particular configuration, I have a lot of things in there, but they're not very visible. So I'm really going to want to change them. But we need to go back and play with this. And I tend to do this one step at a time. So let's start with the grid. The grid is in white, which is fine, but I could barely see it. So I want the markers to be a little bit fatter. We're going to go up to 7 on that. And then as it's listing the coordinates, let's make them bold and italic. And let's increase the size up to maybe 15 or 17. Constellation borders, I'm going to beef those up. I'm going to go to 9 on that, and I'm going to keep the color. Constellation lines, I'm going to beef that up a bit and keep the color. Name stars, I'm going to beef that up to about 9. So that's my process. I work my way down each line. I select each line that has a category of information that I would like to see shown on my annotated image. Then I come in here and I adjust uh, both the color uh, the width of the lines used for the markers, uh, the size of the font and whether I want it in bold and italic. And I do that for every step through. And this can take a while. And rather than have you watch me do that <laughs> tediously step by step, just know that that's what I'm doing as I step through this till I get to a point where I think I have something that will be close and I do another preview. Now let's see what those changes look like. All right. Now our Messier objects are bigger. We're seeing the, uh, the common name title coming out, and it's jumping out at us a little bit more. This starts to get the level of detail that I'm happy with. At this point, I could choose to just say OK, and it would run and create a version of the annotated image, and that's a fine thing to do. But another thing, since we spent a lot of time tuning this and getting it where we wanted, once you have it the way you want it to look, I would strongly suggest you take the triangle and drag it onto the desktop. This will create an instance for, for how you want this script to run. And, and it could be that you're going to use that for this particular project, in which case you can save this as part of the project and it'll come back next time you reload the environment. Or you may say, this is the way I want to do this in general, and I can treat this as uh, an iconified process, which I can put in with my other ones and load it for every project I'm dealing with. Now that I've saved that, I can execute, and we have our annotated version. Uh, the process that we saved, now that I can access it because the script is done running, I can hit this, and I can give it a, a meaningful name. So in this case, I'll just say, I'll call it Lagoon Annotate. 
So now I can use this as a starting point in a, in a future project, or if I came back in here and wanted to make a change for how this was labeled, I can use this to get back to where I was, and then I can make the final edits. One thing I should warn you about is some of these catalogs have a lot of entries, and I would beware of those, especially if you have a wide field image. You're going to end up with way more entries than you really wanted. So say, for example, I came down in here where I wanted to use the Tycho catalog, which has two and a half million stars, or I could uh, use the PGC catalog, which has almost a million galaxies. And I were to add that in, let's see what that does to our image. <laughs> As you can see here, there's a lot of entries. So much so, you can't even see the image behind it very much. So beware of some of those catalogs. In a narrow field view, they may be appropriate, or for the purposes of what you're trying to accomplish, they may be appropriate. But um, don't just assume that every catalog should be included with every image. So using the annotate image script gives you quite a bit of flexibility for annotating your images. It's not quite automatic because you have to decide what the look will be for your image, but it does give you quite a bit of power to dial that look in. I hope this gives you enough information to begin using the annotate image script for your own purposes.